Thank you to Blackology Coffee Company for sponsoring this video. Take 10% off your next order at Blackology Coffee Company by using the link in the description, www.blackologycoffeecompany.com backslash Angela. Thank you so much for coming on today. Um, I'm so excited to talk to you about everything that you have going on as an artist, as an energy healer, and just the work that you have been keeping busy with during this pandemic and what you have going on for the future. So thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to have this chat with you today. Yeah, you're joining me all the way from Canada. How is, how is Canada right now? <laughs> Canada is currently on lockdown again. Um, so we went back into lockdown Christmas Eve day on the 24th. Um, we're supposed to be ending this lockdown on January 23rd, but that's not looking likely as per the number of cases right now. Um, I'm thinking, I was actually just speaking to my father earlier today and he was like, it's probably not gonna be until February, March sometime, which is, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired of it. But um, that's Canada right now. And Canada is actually not that cold. We're usually right now is, uh, we're usually into the winter season and it's usually really quite cold here, but there's not even snow on the ground. So it's been a very mild winter so far. So it's been nice. Okay, okay. I'm all for mild winter. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. I'm from the South. I'm not used to that snow stuff. So. <laughs> um, but on that note, so you guys been inside a lot more than we have here in the states um and so for a lot of business owners that's hard because how do you continue to conduct and create and connect in the same way that you usually do when you can't just be face to face right right yeah um, and so you i mean obviously been writing have been doing some stuff to maintain a connection with people that you've done energy healing work with in the past but you've also transitioned to doing more artwork and that right uh, as an artist not just from like creating to like putting it out there but also creating to like selling this artwork has also been like a unique journey unto itself so do you want to talk a little bit about how your art is connected to energy and your energy work and energy healing and how you've really been able to um i guess just kind of channel what you're thinking and what you're feeling um onto paper and like connect that with people yeah, so about um, this time last year, I really felt the call or like the pull to do more creative things, like start painting, start drawing, start, and um, and to give also myself more space and time in my schedule to do those things. So I, at the time, I kind of took a step back from um, some clients and took like a smaller um, like client load and really focused on what what it is I was doing or feeling called to do with painting and writing and drawing and etc. And so I followed that um, just throughout the year. And then I started, not actually so long ago, I started doing these little drawings, just like on like lined paper. And I was just kind of playing around um, one weekend or one evening. And then I went back to look over the the drawings about a few days later and I was like, oh, that that really looks like or feels like some someone I know their energy. And then I started like looking at it and I could interpret what the what certain lines meant, what certain colors I use meant, what certain just a whole bunch of other things, how they came together to actually portray what that person's energy looked like. And I was like, that was really interesting to me. And so I was actually on a, a client call um, with, with one of the women that I um, do energy work with. And I was telling her about these drawings. And I'm like, I don't know what they are. I'm like, I feel very foolish because they're just, it's almost like I, I, yet, I didn't yet value them at all. And she's like, and she's like, why don't you just like put an Instagram post up or an Instagram story up or something about them? I'm like, I don't, like, I don't even know about that. And so, and she's like, can you send me, you know, pictures of the ones that you've done? And I said, yeah, sure. So I sent her some pictures. She's like, can you, can you do one for me? Like, I'll pay you. I'm like, okay. So I did one for her and she's like, um, she actually challenged me to get out of my comfort zone and put it online. And so I was like, okay, today I will do like one Instagram story post and I will say like, you know, I've been drawing these things and they feel like people's energy and 
And I just kind of put it out there. And I sold like five in one week. And I was like, wow, <laughs> okay. Um, and then I was like, and so then I, you know, put myself out there a little bit more. And I said, okay, I'm gonna challenge myself to start posting them kind of regularly in my actual, you know, Instagram feed. Um, so I started doing that and I did a podcast episode, which hasn't been aired yet, but I did a podcast episode a few weeks ago with um, a good friend of mine that also does energy work and, and business work with empaths and um, intuitives. And she was like, and then she emailed me after work and afterward and said, can I, can I order one? Can I get one for myself and my partner? And so I actually had an idea that we collaborated on and I made a larger piece. So um, it's about one foot by like two feet. Um, and that was like the first largest piece I sold ever. And so I've just kind of been putting out there like next step, next step. People want this for some reason. <laughs> so I, I kept doing them. And then um, over like the kind of the holidays, I sat down and I was like, okay, I really need to put this on my website. And so I uploaded all the images and like, you know, redid my about me page and et cetera. And then I, um, when I was listing out all the works that I've done, I've noticed like more than 70% of the work that I did has sold um, from, 20 and tw from 2020. And I was like, wow, like you don't really realize until you look back at it that I'm like, I actually sold this many amount of pieces and I hadn't really been putting myself out there at all. Um, I just noticed the correlation between, wow, this really feels like someone's energy. And then when they see it, they're like, well, I want that because that's my energy, right? Like they want, it feels like a part of them. Um, and so I said, okay, there's something with this. And so I just started doing these like kind of interpretative drawings. They're really abstract, really minimal. And I, I really like them just as like, an everyday art piece, not even to look at or reflect on people's energy, but I mean, I guess they are part of me. So it feels like I'm, you know, when I'm putting something up there, when I'm drawing something, it, it is a, a piece of me that's going out there. And um, it's weird because as a writer or as someone who is so used to like coaching and talking to people, you're always explaining yourself or you're always explaining the things you're doing the things that you're teaching. I mean, writing is very easy to get your emotions and ideas across with. But art is, um, it's like people can see it how they see it or interpret it how they interpret it. And I kind of like that they get to also put in a piece of how they perceive things. So, you know, it's creating a different kind of dimension or reality based on what they think it is as well. Um, which I find really, really interesting. And that could be like, you know, a very long conversation in itself. But all of these things kind of started adding up and I started to really realize that it's more than just, you know, a few lines on a page. And it's more than just me reading somebody else's energy, but putting these things all together um, that has really kind of come together on its own. And I've been really excited to develop those ideas this past year. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So you touched on just like, so many great things that we could like dive more into but let's first talk about like instagram i feel like <laughs> this is the time of year so like for reference if people haven't gotten it together yet this is like right after the new year that we're talking right now and this is the time of year where everybody's trying to figure out what their marketing plan is going to be everybody's trying to figure out what social media they're going to use what their you know strategy is how to find their target audience how they're going to reach them and Instagram is an ever-changing, ever-moving target in terms of how they're shifting and refining the algorithm to fit what they feel like is creating the best user experience for people on the app, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you have a pretty like nice, solid following on Instagram that's really engaging with you and that really has like been receptive to you putting out this new work and like continuing to redefine who you are and what you do, which is awesome. And I think that speaks volumes. Like at the end of the day, you can like try to hack whatever algorithm you <laughs> care to hack, but like being yourself and showing up as yourself is always, always, always gonna win, so. Thank you. And I also wanna add to that in terms of, and I've noticed this for myself because I have, I have no Instagram strategy whatsoever. I have no, I have no marketing strategy. 
I don't have, a, you know, the, I have no media schedule, whatever. Like I don't, I don't even schedule like posts in at all. Like they usually are, I'm posting whenever I feel called to post something or I'm like, oh, that sounds really good as a caption. I'll put a picture with it type of thing in the moment. But um, I've noticed for myself, and this has does not even have to relate to me being online. When I am doing things that most fulfill my energy and myself as a being, as a person, as a spirit, I attract more people. So on day, for example, on days when I'm doing things that really fulfill me, um, I'm, I notice I get more viewers on my Instagram stories. It has nothing to do with what I'm posting. I mean, there are, we all see on specific days, more people watch Instagram stories than others whatever statistic wise but when i'm doing something that i feel really fulfilling in has nothing to do with work etc or achieving things i will get the most engagement i will get the most viewers on my work i will get the most likes on whatever post and so i started noticing that because um, as i changed over to doing more artwork I mean, there are people that have been following me for years and years talking about ver a variety of different things, right? Like as we grow as entrepreneurs, we're always going to be changing and evol evolving what we're talking about. And the people that have been with me that entire time, they're like, oh, you're just doing art now instead of this. It's still in the same like kind of line or category. You're still kind of speaking to the same things, but you just kind of shifted a notch. And so they're still with me and they're still engaged and they're like, Ooh, I want to see like what you're doing next. Um, but for example, yesterday, I didn't even work yesterday. And I like took my dog for a nice long walk and she ran around and I made really amazing meals that I was enjoying. And I read, I picked up a new book for the library cause you can still like go and get curbside pickup from the library. Um, and so I was reading this book and it had really touched on some ideas I'd had but it kind of just put the language to it. And I was like, all of these things and all these pieces are like kind of aligning in my day. I'll log on to Instagram and it's like, oh, you have four new followers. I did nothing to get those followers other than just being in an energy where I feel really, really good. Um, and I guess that's my kind of Instagram strategy. I don't go out and like other people's accounts to try to get them to like follow me. Cause that they're, for me, there, my energy isn't behind that, right? Like it's, I feel like I'm having to do things to attract other people. Um, but when I'm just being myself and in my own energy, I find that people just kind of find me and we click and it works out perfectly. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Um, and that's kind of like where I'm at with Instagram. It's like, I do, I will say I'm a little more like, formal with Instagram like if I didn't have to be on Instagram I wouldn't be on Instagram <laughs> but um whenever I post like stories it's never anything like this is what I'm posting I want to get certain person's attention like this is just what I'm posting because I like it or I think it's pretty or I think it's cool or just something that I'm feeling in that moment and most of the time like those are the stories that get replied it's like just things that are authentic and things that are just you and yourself so I think that's mm -hmm. awesome um so one thing you did mention was like you when you started i guess like started to see yourself more as an artist you started to like update the language on your website on your about me page and started to present yourself to the world online a little bit differently um and you were fortunate that you had clients that like stuck with you and that are really invested in you as a journey in your journey um as a business owner as a person um, and I would love to dive deeper into that because I think some people miss that. I think some people think that having a business is like showing up, providing someone with a service or a product, they pay you money, you go home. But if that's all <laughs> business was, like everybody would do it, right? Nobody, right. Like there are a thousand photographers out there. Somebody's paying you as for a reason. They want to support you as a person. And I think um, that's what I'm seeing with you is people are supporting you as a person. Um, so can you talk about like your experience with just like, I guess, diving more into that and really not feeling bound by these titles um, in the sense that like you are so much more than anything you could ever put on paper, but you have to kind of give people, I guess, some kind of bearings in terms of how they approach you and how they see you if they're just coming to you cold. Right. So 
And it's weird because I like rarely think of myself as a business owner. Like that's still, I'm like, I just like make things or I just like talk to people. And we, and for me, it's all about creating relationships with people. I've noticed, um, I used to be a personal trainer and nutritionist like years and years ago. And I noticed, um, and this is actually why I came into the online space. I noticed when I was doing personal training with people, the very best times I had was like in between sets where I got to talk to my client and like um, get to know them, get to know their about their lives. And as I was, you know, building up kind of that clientele for over five years, I still had clients coming to me like seriously from the beginning to when I stopped personal training. And that, that was a good five year span. And like people at that point know what they're doing. They know how to do a workout. They don't need me. They like me there, right? Um, and that really spoke to me about creating relationships with people because as soon as you create relationships with people, they're going to be coming back to you regardless. I found at least regardless of what you're doing because they like you as a person, they connect to you for whatever reason, right? Um, they, and they very much trust you, trust what you're doing, know, kind of have like that um, behind the scenes glimpse of your life and what you're like and your own life experiences and all that kind of stuff. And so. Um, I really at the beginning, beginning when I came into the online space in 2016, I was like, I want to do that, um, online with people. I want to, you know, coach women or whatever it is that I end up doing, creating relation, amazing relationships with people. And that has been my number as like, if I'm going to talk about like business goals, one of my, uh, business goals I always have is have an amazing community of people that are really engaged with my work and really, and really like the work that I do and that connect with me. Um, but yeah, it's been the people, the people who are most supportive of me. And I say that financially, um, that buy my things that engage with me, that buy my products or my services. I've created amazing relationships with those people. Um, if I post something on Instagram stories and say like, you know, oh, my dog is sick and we were at the vet and blah, 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 or it's my birthday or, you know, Merry Christmas. Those are the people that are messaging me, sending me the DMs being like, saying Merry Christmas, asking how my dog is, wishing me a happy birthday, right? They're invested. Um, and I do not take those relationships lightly because as much as they, um, as much as I have to pay my bills, I, those relationships are very, very sacred to me. Um, it's, I don't like to blur the lines between business and friendship, but they are friends, right? Like, I mean, Again, I don't like that business owner persona, um, but I love creating relationships with other people because it is it is going to be the core of whatever you do, regardless of you know whatever kind of business you have online, right? And that's people around the world. It's not it's no longer like just community based or in your city or I mean unless you're doing in person events, but even still, like the relationships re that you create with people are going to be the number one thing that breaks, makes or breaks your business. Um, and I have been very fortunate to have amazing people come into my life in that regard. So I would say that like for, as a foundation in business, you have to create amazing relationships with people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree a thousand percent. Um, I think that relationships are all, I mean, they're, they're what carry us as people, right? So why should mm -hmm. we, different in business um and i think that's like so crucial and i guess i didn't think about it explicitly until like we're talking about it now but just like mm -hmm. nobody's ever just one thing right nobody's ever right. just um nobody's ever just <laughs> something. you know what i mean like you right. are always naturally gonna have more than one title depending on the person that you talk to um and so it's only natural for people to gravitate to like what is at the core of who you are, right? Because these titles may not last forever. These titles may right. be. Um, and so we've seen that in this pandemic in more ways than one. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> I think as an entrepreneur, the biggest thing that I've done in the past five years since I started um, my own business is like the inner work. Like I constantly do you know, inner work on different things, on different, like I'll get excited about like one, you know, I don't even know, like like shadow work, for example, then I'll explore that. 
and then that'll kind of like fizzle out and I'll be excited about something else. And so I've been continuously working on myself and like discovering like what layers are underneath me, um, what I strive for, why I do the things that I do and why my behavior is this way. And um, I think that's been pretty, very crucial to um, the longevity as an entrepreneur because being an entrepreneur is very stressful most of the time. I mean, we all know like if we're trying to sell things online, some months are great, some months are not. And if you have more months that are not great, then you get really stressed out about money. Um, but you like looking at the deeper reasons about why you're triggered on some things versus other things, what you're still holding on to, what you're letting go of, um, that at least has been able to release a lot of stress from me and come to terms with like who I am as an individual and like what I actually stand for and bring out the, that on authenticity that I, I very much strive to put, put forward. Um, because like at the end of the day, if you don't know yourself, how are you supposed to be able to express that to others, right? Um, and I think that's been very, very crucial to me. And again, it's a lot of work most of the time, especially as when I was doing more client work, one-on-one um, -on -one work and, and spiritual energy work with people, I was doing like two hours of just personal inner or energy work on myself to be able to um, keep up with that you know, output, right? you need to be able to balance that. And without that balance, I think like things just fall apart. Thank you so much for coming on the show today and just sharing You're welcome. Some, like your journey and like where you are now. I think that's so awesome that you've been able to like dive into your artistry and just dive into just doing things that make you happy. And like that's connecting with people so effortlessly. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. It's been really great to talk about this and like, especially we're just at the start of 2021. So it's like a big wrap up of 2020, right? Um, so thank you for that. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you. I will link your Instagram so people can see your art, see what you have going on, connect with you as a person and just, you know, stay in touch. I'm so happy all the way from Canada. Um, <laughs> I think you're my second Canadian guest. I think that's awesome. Mm. Um, yeah, so hopefully you guys won't be on lockdown too much longer and you guys can have oh. some Fingers crossed, man. Fingers crossed. <laughs>